left to pick up present. A play diet video review. Sit back and get try the show. Hi, welcome to another Lemon Amiga gameplay review. This time we'll take a look at Star Wars from 1988. But before we look at the Amiga version, let's just remind ourselves of the arcade original. The arcade version of Star Wars was released in 1983 and published by Atari. There were two versions of this game, the stand-up version and the sit-down version. Both had uh, unique controls and uh, used uh, coloured vept graphics, as you can see. Uh, probably the first vept graphic game was uh, Spasm, uh, ported for the, the Plato system in 1974. And you might think 3D graphics haven't really come a long way since then. Uh, you might also remember Elite as well, uh, which made use of this technology. But to be honest, to uh, produce such fast flowing sections as this on an arcade machine, uh, 3D vectors are probably the best way to go. Certainly a step up from uh, sprites and bitmaps. But here we go, this is the arcade version of the trench. Yahoo! You're all clear, kid! I'm just about to blow up my first Death Star. And another interesting factoid about the arcade is uh, the game was the very first to feature sampled speech from the movies. Um, sampled speech has become a, a stock. Uh, item in games and today people think nothing of it but back in the day uh, particularly on the uh, Apple Mac conversion of this game the sampled speech was a huge selling point so let's have a look at the Amiga conversion by Jürgen Friedrich of Demark Red five standing by. and Demark converted this game to all kinds of systems 8-bit systems uh, before the license was taken over by uh, Ron de Bund a few years later and as you can see the Amiga version is probably the closest uh, conversion to match the arcade it's uh, not quite arcade perfect the sample speech even though it is included uh, isn't quite as numerous as in the arcade version but the general uh, gameplay is uh, remarkably similar This is actually the triple uh, O version on the, an Amiga 500. Uh, this is the ADF, so you won't find any bugs in this version. So after the initial fight on level one, uh, we return returned to the trench. And uh, as you can see, it's reminiscent of the arcade. Uh, as I say, it's probably the best conversion, even though it's not arcade perfect. I think the programmers did a remarkable job and the graphics flow freely even on a stock Amiga 500 and as we shall see later on we'll take a look at the uh, Meteor CPUs to see how this game fares for a, a much 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 faster experience so here's me blowing up the Death Star on the Amiga There are many waves of attack, and this is only the second one. They get progressively harder as the game continues, and at the moment you might think this game's pretty easy. The uh, enemies don't fire particularly accurate shots, and they are infrequent enough to shoot these shots out of the sky. Uh, you might see me uh, frequently 
shooting Darth Vader there. You can't actually kill Darth, but you can use him to accumulate some score. And you can always shoot Darth as he heads back into the, uh, the Death Star. Uh, like this, a few times. And on level 2 we get to see uh, another section of the game which is set on the surface of the Death Star. Uh, later on we will see towers uh, and all kinds of things shooting at us. On this first level all the player needs to do is to remove all these uh, red traps and destroy all those for a, a nice big bonus. Uh, the game starts off pretty easy and as I say on the Amiga 500 the uh, the game gives you plenty of time and scroll it isn't uh, too fast and uh, the game is uh, very playable and here we are on the second trench this time we will see the inclusion of walkways which we'll have to navigate between if we want to get through this level in one piece and as you can see some of these walkways are quite narrow to, to fit through. Sometimes you have to destroy uh, this flak as you're moving through these areas. And uh, control on the Amiga is uh, via the mouse, so uh, the shooting objects is made much, much, much easier by that method of control. I'll take you through the first four waves on the Amiga 500 version uh, just to show you the uh, escalating level of difficulty and um, at this point you might think the game is getting repetitive and yes it is uh, there isn't much here to encourage the player until they get onto the later waves uh, 5, 6, 7 and 8 and then the game becomes much 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 more interesting and uh, with a decent CPU it becomes fast and furious so Let's just waste a couple of these uh, enemies and uh, take a look at the third set of towers which we must destroy to get to the next level. Look at the, size of that thing. the third wave introduces us to uh, the taller towers, the yellow towers, and if the player manages to remove all the white blocks on the top of these towers, we will gain an extra shield which comes in very handy uh, later on in the game when shields become a premium so uh, in the top right hand corner you can see the number of towers remaining I have four towers remaining on this section three so let's see if I can clear those miss that one missed it again and if you collide into the towers or if you get shot down you will uh, lose a shield and you can have a maximum of nine shields in this game so now let's see the trench again and this time the walkways become really hard and this is only the third wave uh, it can be helpful to stay at the bottom of the screen and uh, use the controller like a, a driving game uh, moving left and right but that tactic doesn't hold together very well for very long and you'll find that you need to be on constant alert and in constant movement in these trenches if you want to blow the Death Star up and if you miss the Death Star you have to go through the same trench again and this time you have to manage to hit it and so on to the fourth wave and blowing up the usual enemies so this game was converted to all the 8-bit systems, in fact I used to have a, a, a version on the Commodore 64 which was a hack version uh, made by another programmer uh, using very tiny graphics and that really was a novel game. Uh, I also had uh, an Amiga version with hacked voice samples and when you destroyed um, a TIE Fighter the, the game would scream at you and uh, voice samples such as Luke, you tosser, and five fucking missiles, five fucking missiles, and that kind of thing, uh, which made that game unique. I have no idea 
what ended up with that crack. I think it was a local uh, version. Uh, but I certainly remember that version of the game. So let's see if I do any better on the fourth wave towers, uh, which can be slightly easier than the third wave. Uh, in some respects, I'm moving through those towers with rapid succession now. And it's also important to avoid that firepower. So, seven towers to find. Sometimes it's easier to blow away the red uh, traps there, first of all, and then it saves you getting stuck in the middle of a, a lot of missiles. Uh, but definitely try and aim for those towers to try and get the extra shield, which we'll need. But unfortunately, as so often happens, aiming for those towers only results in you losing a number of shields and that significantly hinders your progress over the rest of the game. So if in doubt, avoid. And there's no greater example of that rule than in the trenches. And let's weave up and down, left and right, uh, avoid everything. Sometimes, like I say, you can shoot the, uh, the red panels on the side and you can shoot the missiles as well. But you might notice when you're actually playing this game, the, the player actually moves the head up and down, looks around corners, bobs up and down as they try and navigate that field. So it's quite interactive, quite reminiscent of the stand-up uh, or the sit-down arcade version. So, that's the uh, triple O version. Uh, let's have uh, another look at the game. Let's play the medium level this time using the All 30 version. On the All 30, you can see the enemies uh, are very much faster, everything moves very much uh, smoother, and the enemies do fire uh, quite uh, a lot of missiles at you. And as we shall see later on, those missiles can come very thick and fast. But the game plays so much, so much better on the uh, all 30 as a result. By selecting the medium level, we automatically skip to the third wave. So you might recognise this wave already. And you might also notice that uh, one of our X-Wing's guns, the one on the top left, side is missing on this version that's because I'm now using the WHD load uh, archive which uh, has a bug in there which seems to remove the top gun and I'm having absolutely no effect on those towers whatsoever uh, maybe that's a bug in the WHD load version but look at this the the trench is so much more exciting with the all 30 version uh, the player will find themselves bobbing and weaving around this version. Look at this. And this really makes the game worth playing with a decent CPU behind you. You will gain an extra shield as well for completing the Death Star. And that puts me up to three. Oh, that's not going to last very long. That's two. And the, uh, you might notice the, uh, the weaponry really does start coming very fast now on the all 30. So let's get through this and take on those towers again on the second level. It's pretty there are only three levels in this game. Um, and there are only three levels in the sequel, The Empire Strikes Back. And for that matter, The Return of the Jedi. The Empire Strikes Back uses the same back to graphics but uh, Return of the Jedi uh, on the Amiga uses filled uh, sprites one shield remaining this isn't looking very good no shields remaining so in that case the best thing to do is to avoid 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 clear your path through the obstacles and just fly straight through it and the level 4 trench, I didn't get very far in that. And when the game's completed, you get to enter your name in the high score table. Which I don't think saves in the WHD lower version. R2 trying to increase the power! 
And now we get to see the O20 over this section. This uh, is the hard level, which takes us straight to wave 5. And as you can see, and here, I'm rapidly clicking the mouse uh, to uh, try and survive this game. Uh, this game really is a mouse buster, and it can be a mouse killer as well. Uh, I'm concentrating on blowing up the firepower before I get to the enemies, uh, because it's the firepower that kills you, it's not the enemies, so it's important to get rid of those first of all. Look at the size of that thing. Look at the size of that thing. It's all back to the wave 5 towers. And uh, I'll show you maybe up to wave 6 on the O20. So you can see the tower section on the O20 is slightly slower than the same thing on the O30. But it's still faster than the Amiga 500 version. And uh, you might notice the game slows down with, uh, with all these lasers, whatever they are, flying towards the screen. But the more you get rid of those towers, the faster the game will speed up. And let's just avoid my way through these. For some reason I'm not managing to hit anything. And avoid the sidewalks. Let's try again. So the all 20 Again, probably just as quick as the all 30 on this section. And again, you might notice the game speeding up when the lasers move off screen. But this is a very rapid section and this is what makes the game worth playing. I wouldn't recommend the A500 version uh, until you get onto the later waves. 9 or 10, something like that, but on the all 30, all 20, uh, you can get straight into the action. And it really does live up to those expectations, fast and furiously. Bang, 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 bang. Down to four shields. Get rid of you, Darth. and try my best to blow these away. It really is an onslaught now, but I'll give you a quick look at wave seven after this for some real, real, real fast and furious action. Look at the size of that thing. And what can I say about this game? Well, the graphics aren't arcade perfect, but they're probably as close as they're gonna get. Uh, the game runs smoothly on any system and really does benefit from a decent CPU. The sound effects, well, they are adequate. Uh, you don't get as many voice samples as you do on the arcade, or maybe even on the Apple Mac version, but still uh, get those samples, which is novelty, and uh, the rest of the sound effects are just enough to flash the game out. As I say, the three levels can be quite repetitive, but because the action gets faster and faster and the enemies become more numerous as you play through the game, look at these sidewalks, these are, these are just amazing, um, then the sound and the playability is just enough to flash out this, uh, the game. Uh, in fact, I couldn't imagine how anyone could make this game more playable than the arcade original. So I think the programmers did a, a really good job. Basic, yes, but playable. And that's what matters. Now look at this. Wave 7. Bang, bang, bang. I really am hammering this fire button on the mouse. And I have killed mice before now, playing this game constantly on the all 30. The, uh, the, these guys, as I say, once you get onto the later waves, are ridiculously hard and it takes all your power and concentration just to blow away their missiles so this is me clinging onto those two shields uh, trying to blow those guys away in between bursts of firepower and it really is furious now quite hectic indeed get rid of you Darth and let's have a look at the wave 7 towers I'm now over a million points so you really can rack up that score uh, and it's always nice to get over a million points for that prestige so 
as you can see I'm uh, hitting those towers now just about uh oh all shields gone that's me and I've got a second with that which is terrific because it's only 1.2 million for a high score so this game is brilliant definitely on two player challenge mode even though you can't play two player head to head you can get together with a friend and uh, battle your way through this game and so that's Star Wars so there's just time to show you this this is the PD game called Star Wars and uh, this time we uh, get to see um, a thrust type game uh, we will get to pilot uh, an X-Wing fighter through three levels, three demo levels and this game is available on the Aminet so it's a real pity the programmers didn't complete this game uh, because it really is a great game but the three levels in question aren't very large but they are very difficult and the graphics are uh, very well drawn and the sound effects as well very nice so we start on Endor the forest moon of Endor and straight away we come under fire from those ground guns and die so that gives you some idea uh, this game was originally shareware uh, with the promise that the shareware fee would uh, ultimately buy you the full version but as I say the Australian program has never got around to finishing this game due to exams and that kind of thing so what we have instead is uh, definitely good enough uh, for a demo uh, by landing precariously we can pick up some survivors of the rebel fleet who have been captured I've just blown this guy out of a prison uh, there are six or seven guys on this level and I think you have to pick them all up to complete the level but uh, this game really does come into its own with uh, an auto fire joystick I'm not using auto fire at the moment just to show you how difficult it can be and let's fly up there there's a trap right at the top here and it's knock for knock <laughs> you blow that thing up as it kills you but luckily the traps don't respawn and you do get a a variety of lives there so you, it is possible to complete this game however hard it might be and on the later levels you get to pick up R2-D2 and C3PO uh, unfortunately you don't get to pilot the, uh, the, the Falcon which would have been the ultimate uh, boon on this game but you can't so never mind you do get to blow up an at, -at as, w as well which is uh, a decent inclusion on the uh, Hoth level some like it Hoth and this is me dying 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 on this level so Star Wars yeah th the game is worth picking up and uh, you might have noticed the intro music is from this game as well slightly uh, remastered uh, you could say equalized and that's it so thank you for viewing my Star Wars uh, playthrough review and also uh, taking a look at Star Wars uh, maybe we'll get to see Return of the Jedi and the Empire Strikes Back uh, at another time thank you remember the force will be with you always